Good morning and welcome to all. We do have several who are visiting with us this morning. We're so glad you're here. So glad you came with us on this New Year's Day to worship and to praise our God and to think about His Son and the sacrifice that He made on our behalf. You don't get to preach on New Year's Day very often. And so how could you preach on New Year's Day and not talk about resolutions? And we're going to do that this morning. We're going to use what was read for us in our scripture reading from Psalm chapter 1 and look at the resolutions of the righteous. Granted, most of us have already made some resolutions. Some of those resolutions we really know we're not going to be keeping too well. If you're like me, over the last couple of weeks you ate a lot of sweets and you've been feeling that in your body. And so you have said things to yourself like, I'm not going to eat a lot of sweets this year. And you know by mid-January, well, we're back on the sweets. But there are other resolutions, other behaviors, other conducts that maybe we've given more sober thought to. Now we thought that there are things that as I begin this year that, that I know I need to change and I need to do better at. We want to look at three of those this morning in Psalm chapter 1. Granted, Psalm chapter 1 is not about a godly man making resolutions. It is is describing who a godly man is and exactly how he is distinguished from the wicked. We're going to use that for the temple this morning because I'd ask you to ask yourself two questions. Is righteousness a concern for me? And secondly... Do I wish to be blessed by God? If you answer yes to either of those questions, and hopefully answer yes to both of those questions, then Psalm 1 has some resolutions for you. This morning we're going to briefly look at those three resolutions. And three of our shepherds are going to lead us in brief prayers about each of those resolutions. We start in verse 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked and stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Our first resolution this morning is to have nothing to do with wickedness. In verse 1, three areas are spoken about. You have a way of thinking. Counsel. You have behavior, that is the way or path. And you have character, that is the seat. I want to say that most likely this morning, if you were here, then you were not in the seat of scoffers. That does not define your character. I'd also say that those of us who are here this morning, that we're probably already trying to not walk down the path of sinners. That we recognize that there are behaviors and we're, we're trying to deal with those and we're trying to do better and we repent when we sin. And so we're trying to change those behaviors. And so maybe what we actually need to be resolved about is the first one. We need to stop listening to the counsel of the wicked. We need to make sure our thoughts are in line. Because that's where it starts. I ask you to go to one other passage as well. Go over in your New Testament to the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. Let's look at another well-known passage. And notice that all three of these principles are here as well. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 17. The Apostle Paul writes to these saints at Ephesus and he says, So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk... There's your path. There's your behavior. You walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind. They've been listening to bad counsel. Their mind isn't right. That's why they're walking the way that they are. He says they are darkened in their understanding. Again, here dealing with the mind. Excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And then he says in the very next verse, and they having become callous. You see, all three are there. 
You have the way of thinking. You have behavior. And then you have character. They have become callous. So the Apostle Paul says, get away from that. That's what we should be resolved to do as well. It doesn't matter what the counsel of man is. Know for a fact that the counsel originates with men, it does not lead you to God. No matter how our society would define it, whether liberal or conservative, if the council resides with men, it does not lead to God. It will lead you to behaviors and then to character that takes you away from God. What should be our first resolution? To have nothing to do with wickedness. Starting with, what am I listening to? And what thoughts am I having? Brother Tommy Matthews is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Truly what a blessing it is to come to thee in prayer. We pray for strength to withstand temptation. Father, help us to be mindful of the way that we think. To put in our mind pure thoughts. Thoughts that center around your son, thy word, and heaven. That our behavior will be in praise and glory and honor to our Savior and to our Heavenly Father. We pray that our character will be pure, will be holy, and we can set forth the right examples. Father, help us to run away from wickedness to turn our back on sin and to not let Satan into our lives. As a righteous child of God, we want nothing to do with wickedness. And we pray, Father, that you would give us the strength to daily put on the armor of God and to stay away from the things of this world and what this world has to offer and to put on the new man of God and to truly withstand temptation with your help and your guidance that when our life is over, we can be in heaven with you. In Jesus' name, amen. The second resolution is found in verse 2. Here's the contrast. The man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers, his delight, rather, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. The second resolution that we, God's righteous, should have is to actually delight in the law of God. I love that so often the Scripture speaks of it as law and not just the Word of God. So often in our lives we think of law and we think of law as being something that's restrictive and binding, and granted it is. But God's law has freedom in mind. It is actually trying to free us from the ways of the wicked. It's actually trying to free us from all the pitfalls of this world and to give us life in Him. And so the righteous, yes, he understands that the law of God is going to say to him, is going to point out to him that there are things I must not do. But he also sees in that law there is freedom. There is life. There is a relationship with God. And so he delights in it. 
Many of us have resolutions already. I'm going to, to read, whether it be the whole Bible or a portion of the Bible this year, and that's a good resolution. But don't equate that with delighting in the law of the Lord. That is a good step. There are many good steps that aid us in delighting in the law of the Lord. Being an active participant in our Bible studies here. Coming to the assembling of the saints and to the neighborhood studies and engaging in those studies. Listening to podcasts or sermons from other preachers or whoever it may be and being refreshed throughout the week in those ways. But the idea of delighting is we're taking this information in and we understand this is what God has given us. This is what God has given us to aid us in being righteous and having the freedom we so desire. Sometimes delighting in the law of the Lord isn't reading the law of the Lord at all. It's simply being still. And taking into account what we know of God's Word. And thinking about our lives and thinking about our circumstances. And knowing that God has already provided the guidance and the answer. And pondering Him. As a resolution of the righteous, truly delight in His law. Understand that He gave it to us for freedom and for life. Brother Steve Patton is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Holy Father, we are so thankful we can know you as our God. We can look at the creation and know you exist, but we can only truly know you as you reveal yourself to us through the words of your apostles and prophets. And through that, we come to know you as the all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving God. And through it, we can know what is best for our lives. And we're so thankful that your word was finally fully expressed in your Son, Jesus Christ, coming to this earth. And we could see the word become flesh. Father, delighting in your law is also delighting in you. And that it is a reflection of a relationship with you that does transform us, change our lives. And give it the meaning and direction that you meant for it to have. So Father, may we truly treasure your word. May we lay it up in our heart that we might not forget you. May we allow it to be the light unto our path. We pray, Father, that every day of our life that we will feed upon your word and that we will be thankful that it does instruct, that it does exhort, that it does restrict so that we might truly walk in paths of righteousness. Help us, Father, truly to love you by loving your word. And may that be at the heart of our life in this new year. We pray in our Savior's name. Amen. The third resolution, again, not given as a resolution in the passage. Rather, verse 3 of Psalm chapter 1 gives really what is the logical conclusion. If here is one who has rejected the ways of the wicked, and rather he has delighted in God's law and meditates in it day and night, then he'll be a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. The one who rejects the wicked delights in God's law, he prospers, he bears fruit. The third resolution of the righteous is to do just that. 
as we also bring into account all of our thoughts and actions, as we also delight in the law of the Lord, then it's with the aim. We want to bear fruit for God this year. Now, there's a couple of ways in which you can define fruit. Perhaps for most of us, the, the passage we go to even think about first when we think about fruit is the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. And certainly this is the kind of fruit that flows and is produced by delighting in God's law. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. These characteristics, this character becomes ours. It is the fruit borne out by rejecting the counsel of the world and delighting in God's law. But I think we also ought to be mindful that, that this fruit then should yield and produce more fruit. That if love and peace and gentleness and kindness, and kindness are a part of my life, then that's also bearing fruit in others. Maybe it's encouraging my brothers and sisters and helping them bear fruit. Or maybe it is not only set an example for those in the community, but in my love, teaching and helping those to come to an understanding of God's will. And as we continue our efforts in this place, and JP is not here today, but what a wonderful work he and Chelsea and so many have been engaged in over this past year. But as we start this year, we have to know we all have a part in this great work. We all have a part in teaching the lost and in bringing more to God to bring and to give Him glory. What's the resolution of the righteous? We want to bear fruit for God this year. We want to bear fruit in our lives and the character that we exhibit. We want to bear fruit in helping others to come to know and appreciate and understand the message of the gospel and what it means for them. Brother John Sheehan is going to offer a prayer at this time that we would bear fruit for God. Pray together. Father, thank you for providing a plan for each of us. We can have a relationship with you through your son. We pray we will value that relationship above all else. As we begin a new year, Father, we pray that each of us will demonstrate our commitment to you, Father as we live by the Spirit, which will cause us to develop a character that will generate love for each other, peace when provoked, patience when frustrated, kindness to, com to comfort others, goodness in the face of corruption, faithfulness to endure challenges, gentleness to care for others, self-control when tempted. We pray, Father, as we continue to work on the, these personal attributes that reflect Jesus, that each of us will have an influence on our family members, friends, co-workers, and that they will see Jesus living in us. Father, we also ask your blessings as we work together in your kingdom to honor and glorify you. Bless us as we edify our brothers and sisters. Bless us to teach our children. Bless us to have an influence in our community that reflects Jesus. Bless us to support our evangelists in their work in this community and beyond. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. As great a time of year as this is, 
So there's a little bit of cynicism that goes with this time of year. Statements like, well, resolutions are, are made to be broken. I was recently privy to a conversation between two young men, and one young man asked the other, what are your resolutions for this year? The young man said, well, I'm not going to make any because I know I'm not going to keep them anyway. And again, there, there are many things in our lives that, okay, yeah, we, you know, if you say, I'm going to run five miles a day every day, well, no, that, you're not. Well, some of you, most of you, most of us. All of us, JP probably would, but he's not here. So all of us in this room, we're, we're not doing that. When we make these resolutions, understand, it does not mean every day of our lives that we're always going to reject the counsel of the wicked. It does not mean that every day of our lives we will have delighted in the law of God does not mean that every day of our lives we will have borne fruit. But what we're trying to do is develop character. That's what God wants to see in us. And so then what we do when we find ourselves not being true to those resolutions is that we turn around yet again. And we aim to once again reject the counsel of the wicked. And we aim to once again delight in the law of God. And we aim to once again bear fruit. Because when you look at the concluding portion of the psalm, the psalmist is making sure we understand just how important this is. The wicked are not so. That is, they do not prosper. They do not bear fruit. But they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, the way of the wicked will perish. Here is why it is so important that we have these resolutions and we come back to them time and time again because a judgment is coming. And God, who not only knows our thoughts, sees our actions, but knows the character behind each of those, he has said, I will judge you all. Our desire is to be righteous. That the Lord would know us, and therefore we would be blessed. And the invitation that we offer this morning is that you can know that the Lord knows you, and that is by being found in His Son. Listen to His counsel. Listen to the gospel that He proclaimed and the salvation from your sins that He offered if you would put your faith in Him. Then walk in His paths. And it may even be that this morning the first step you need to take is confessing His name, repenting of your sins, and being baptized for the remission of your sins. And then follow Him every day. Be resolved to be righteous as He is. If we can aid you in any way this morning, we invite you to come as we stand and